Recording, Mrs. Ryan. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Hello there, Mrs. Ryan. Good work. Oh my goodness, Hello. we got people it's walking so around. Let's see. We blur. got some lights going on in here. Holy smokes. Uh oh. Hello. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's producer Kali. <laughs> here we go. We'll just. Uh, Go to a different camera then, since she wants to sit there. We had it all in different places, but she switched right at the last minute there. No. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's sort of the way her life's going these days, isn't it? <laughs> Bow out now. Thank you. Oh, well, good evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jay Ryan. This is Nicole Ryan. We are the Ryans. It is lovely to be here. Uh, my goodness, we have a full house today. We've got producer Kali, and we have got Jackie Mazzarella here. I can't wait to bring her out, but we've got some stuff to cover first. Yeah. Hello, Mrs. Ryan. Hello. I How are say... you doing today? Ugh. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. That was sarcastic because I know you specifically don't want to answer it today. I'll answer it. Um, I just feel massive discomfort. So every time I have a thought that I don't love, I'm like, what's that? Like it just ridge, it go, reverberate so through my whole body. Flares up your whole body. Yep. Yeah. That's super nice. But It I sounds feel... easy because it's like, oh, just don't have any negative thoughts. Like, so easy. Sure. That's not no. easy. That's hard. That's really hard. That is not easy. Yeah. So. That's a struggle. That's, that's but you're tough. working on it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I'm working on it. I'm sorry that it's causing you discomfort i know that's the name of the game and that's pretty much daily but still the good thing is i don't feel anything so i just know that i'm like i'm not moving right so i know that something's off surprisingly you're moving but quite well but i don't well today. feel anything and yeah it may just be not feeling it but um all right well we're Welcome gonna get through to that me. yeah it is what it is <laughs> it is what it is this is the thing this is the part that makes people uncomfortable and that's okay. I think it's perfectly natural to get uncomfortable, except that that only makes it worse for you. So it's really temporary. And you don't, yeah, you don't need to get uncomfortable. It's not a thing. It's kind of like, oh, I've got a headache today. Her headaches just affect her whole body, and they're way worse than headaches. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> no, my, a similar concept. My point is, it's an ailment. It's an ailment. Oh, I've got a sore throat. Oh, I've got a thing. Oh, my MS. Uh, you know, you don't want to complain about it every day. Um, no. It's almost like I make you talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, you like. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> Got these two. Oh. <laughs> I'm not spilling anything today. Is that what that is? <laughs> spilling from your eye holes? I get sad. All right, Mrs. Ryan. Uh, we weren't here yesterday. I'd like to tell you why. I have a weird neck thing. Uh, I don't want to get into it because I don't really know what to tell you, but I think I got a slip disc or something. I find it very ironic that with this fucking desk and chairs came David Letterman's fucking hairline, and now I've got his fucking jack neck, too. Yes. Yeah. Like, nobody told me this was all going to be part of it. Oh, it's all there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, seriously. Um, anyway, so I inflamed the hell out of that and literally couldn't uh, move. I spent the entire yesterday upside down in bed with my head off the foot of the bed. So sorry about that. Couldn't be helped. <laughs> I'm so happy it. that we're both uh, up today. So we're falling apart, but we're figuring it out. Uh, let's go straight to the East Coast feed, yeah, shall we? Yeah, there is one. Oh, good. All right. Let's check in with Steve Kaz, <clears throat> Danbury Chive, and the East Coast feed. Where is he today? Oh, you know what? Shoot, I didn't put it in here. Uh-oh. Yeah. I didn't put it in here. That's the wrong thing anyway. Boy, that's so silly. Oh, well. No, no, no. I can put it in. I'm going to stop the recording, but I'm going to put it. Nobody else will know I'm stopping the recording. I'm stopping okay. the recording, and I'm going to put it in. Got yeah, it. yeah, I'm going to do that. Hang on one second. All right, let's go to the East Coast feed <laughs> with Steve Kaz and Danbury Chai. Wait, Roll it, Hal. Ryan, the castaways have just celebrated a W. We got Joey One Box has returned. We got Caitlin, Killer Cam. But we brought you here for a special reason. We're in Jersey tonight. Because why? Because we at White Castle. That's right, White Castle. <laughs> you see, you feel the love when we take you to White Castle because LA doesn't have White Castle. We give you love from Jersey. <laughs> Mr. New York is like, I'm going to give you love from Jersey. 
Uh, I'm going to be a jerk. Are we recording? Yeah. Yeah, again? Okay, then, yeah. He's hilarious. Do we really not have a White Castle here? I don't think so. I mean, if so, it would be very new, and a lot of people would be talking about it. All right, well. Dunkin' Donuts you. was a big deal when oh, we got that. I still, yeah. You're right. Yeah, I probably know. It's so funny. <laughs> you want some belly bombers? No, now I want donuts, so. I'm <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I went off, so. Oh, my goodness Enjoy gracious. Enjoy White Castle. That is very funny. I guess when Jackie got here, I just stopped producing the show and sat down and started talking to you because there was a whole other thing I didn't do as well. So I'm now going to uh, also uh, send the, the, the Kaz. Oh, shit, for God's sake. This is, this is me completely out of it. Kaz Family Guy Challenge. And I'm now going to send uh, – I'm not going to do any of that. I'm not going to do it. We'll do it tomorrow. Okay. We'll do it tomorrow. I want to get Jackie in here. I'm conscious Seriously. of her time and the fact that that took a second and everything else. All right. We'll come into that tomorrow. Sorry, guys. Um, let's get straight into the question that is on everyone's minds. What's going on, dun, Mrs. Ryan? Dun, 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 <laughs> um, Well, really quick. The Emmy nominations were today, mm. and this used to be like my whole world. Yeah, of I used the to summer. get up at five in the morning and the whole bit. Sometimes I used to go to them, and I would get up at three to go to wherever they are announced and shit. It was before yep. blackberries and stuff. But um, <laughs> there's a whole mess of, of nominations of people that I know and love, and I'm so proud of. But the one that I really want to give a shout out to is Trevor Noah got nominated for The Daily Show. And my brother's over there, works there, and my friends work over there. A lot of friends I'm there, yeah. so proud of them. It's such a big deal for Trevor to come out of the gate and be like, hey, Well, this is I'm his new. second year, right? And is it his second year being nominated? I think so, right? Yeah. Yes, this one just feels more real. Like, it's more deserved. Like, they've put so much work okay. in modifying this show. You know what? I'll give you that because the first one's kind of the carryover from Jon Stewart's yeah. show. And then this year, they've made a lot of changes, and it's become the Trevor Noah show. Yes. Okay. Specifically. Good and point. it's great, and I'm so point. proud of everyone over there. But for nice. the news, the study, the first one that I thought, I, re I just thought of you. Um, there was a study done on how phrasing questions influences how people respond. I, yeah, I read that. Yeah. Did you get into the nitty gritty of it and what oh, and why? Yeah, and I want to, like, this was like Psych it's, 101 for it, me. It comes down to how to get people to be most honest with you, right? How you phrase the question can depend on whether or not uh, the person is honest with you, truthful with you. Yes, there, yes. It, there's a psychological trigger that we don't even we're not consciously aware of of like oh they said that they asked this way they must not be comfortable for me to say answer this way they, honestly so they people change the answer so the the tip was to be as direct when you're asking things so that you get as direct a response i believe the tip is to be as direct in communication as possible in general whether it's a question or a statement or spreading the love or whatever. I feel that the more concise you can be, the more clear the message. Yeah. The, the, the less, the less uh, margin for error, the less room there is for interpretation. Of, oh, he might have meant something else. Well, not if I tell you exactly what I mean. I, obviously, at, at some point, everything can be. But you know that this is what we, we, we pitch with this thing. So I love this story. Yeah. Uh oh, I took it away from you, though. I'll tell you that. Sorry. No, we, you and I disagree about linguistics sometimes. And this is one of those situations where you're like, less is more. Be honest, be direct, be clear. And I'm like, but some people don't like to say the same thing over and over and over when they're like, how are you today? People will say over and over and don't think about it, which is a bad example. That's one I don't like. But like, when you ask people what they're doing, I don't know. It's. Sometimes being so direct that you lose the emotion of the sentiment mm. is like, then why bother talking? Like, I don't need to know that. I can look that up myself. I would, ag I agree with you. I would say it's got to be a case by case. Because if we're just talking about clear communication, that's one thing. But if you're talking about adding emotion to it and taking someone's feelings into consideration, obviously there are other factors. Yeah, well, did yeah, well, this study was specifically about competitive settings, which I feel like everything's a competitive setting. So yeah, me too. Let's move on. You want to move to the next one? Sure. Um, the next one is there was a new study done on electric fish that revealed mechanisms for distinguishing the self from others. 
electric fish, mm -hmm. like e eels, mm -hmm. that type of thing? This was some kind of fish fish like that they've studied. Fish or something. something like that. Okay. But um, it was super. It was super, a fish fish. It was a fish fish. It wasn't an eel. Oh, I see. Very well put. Okay. Um, I've read that real like name of it. That's but good. like it was fascinating because it th this kind of fish creates energy to understand its surroundings. And so they turned off like whatever mechanism in the brain like allows them to distinguish th their own physical mechanisms versus their surroundings once they turned on the energy light, basically. And they were lost. They were like blind. They acted like they were blind. So. Because they have their own energy source, so they don't need a collective energy source. Is that what you're saying? I'm, I'm trying to associate this into like a Tesla experiment, uh, the man, not the company. Um, he was uh, con convinced that he could come up with the you know wireless electricity for the entire world. And in this case, it seems like they're beaming maybe the tank or whatever these fish are in, fulfilling uh, an electric field around them. Is that what you're saying? I'm they're, not, they're substituting I'm not sure. whatever the fish generates with a, a collective. I no. mean, oh, okay. Um, this kind of fish generates electricity to like turn on itself. So mm -hmm. when it's turned on, it's like, oh, now I know where I am. Yes. But w it confuses its own noise. Like it's the brain mechanism, like turns off its own noise, its own like body noise of like chewing or whatever to understand its environment better. And when the, whatever the mechanism was turned off, they could they confused their own like bodily noises with their surroundings. When, sorry, so it got they got they were like blind. It was very weird. That's weird. I'll explain that later. Here's my here's the <laughs> next one. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't understand that one. I, I understand portions of it. I, I I can't figure out the relevance. So I'd love to come back to it. Okie doke. Um, green lights uh, could save birds and turtles from fishing nets. Green lights? Yeah, they're just keep swimming, right? Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. <laughs> what do we? Don't stop. No, no good. Yeah. Okay, sorry. I don't get it, but um, my. Well, you don't drive anymore, but green lights for most drivers mean go, and red means stop. <clears throat> oh right. Let me test out the different colors, and apparently green was least problematic, and it's the one that like. Fish still, yeah, maybe it's that. Like fish still swam through. <laughs> They're like, yeah, I still go here. Um, but the turtles and birds did not, which is why they put, are putting lights on fishing nets now, which I'm not into, even though they're LED. Are LEDs the one that don't give off heat and stuff? Mm -hmm. Yeah, All no right. heat. They're, they're very efficient. Well, I don't know exactly. I think we'll find out in a few years that the, the, the burn is probably not good for us. <laughs> There's another way. Uh, but whatever. I mean, that, that's like everything else goes. Um, all right. Is that it? Well, the last one is funny to me. Um, Here's the thing. With that, if you want to have a discussion on it, I have less issue with lights on nets uh, than I do uh, with the – we watched that Deadliest Catch show. That Deadliest Catch show. We watched the show Deadliest Catch. <laughs> Uh, and the, one of the captain's experiments with these, um, they're not putting bait in. They're putting like electric fake bait that puts out this like signal. A, a, a signal into the thing that makes the crab think there's Food. bait in there or a fish or whatever. And I have nope. a, a, a moral, a, a moral, a humanity. Like I, I have such issue with this because you're, it's it's enough that you're catching the crab for food. Like I get that, but. They're at least getting fed in the process when you give them the bait. Now we're tricking them that there's bait in here. Then you, you just, no it bait. just sounds like, yeah, it sounds like the fucking border. I mean, you know what I mean? It yeah. just sounds like there's, I don't know. I, I don't like it. Uh, meanwhile, I'm sure it's cheaper, more efficient, uh, everything. And then guess what? Someday there won't be any more It's crab. less humane, though, and I don't like that element of it. I don't care if it's cheaper. Yeah, feed them while they're in the pot at yeah. least. Totally. I don't know. Uh, all right. One more or that's it? My last one. I'll, I didn't read too much into it, but I laughed a lot. Um, <laughs> Sarah Palin said she was duped by Sasha Baron Cohen because she was, and I don't want to get political, so it's not about that. I worked with Sasha for years. He's, he's amazing. He's really smart. But the fact that, and she quoted and said this, that she was duped and asked to do a legit Showtime historical documentary there's no there's no such thing 
Like that's crazy. Showtime, no one at Showtime would send an ask right, to right, you okay, okay. and be like, we're doing <laughs> a legit documentary. Like it's crazy. Are you all right? <laughs> <laughs> I guess not. Well, you have issues with Sarah Palin, it seems. No, I find that really funny, and it frustrates me that she's like, "I was duped." I'm like, "No, they were." It's the same thing of like, they "Okay, were but now you're clear. being duped by what Sarah Palin said." Now you're getting all frustrated by it. You know what I'm saying? Like, who's the winner here? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> this is a weird energy in here today. I'll tell you that. Yeah. All right. Well, I have. Um, let's see. What order should I do these? Um, yeah, I'll do them in the order that I wrote them. How about that? Middle children are going extinct oh, just yeah. when we need them the most. What does that mean? Well, we're having fewer kids, which is probably a good thing, I think, from a population standpoint. But there used to be middle kids. There used to be, you know, three, four, five kids. That was regular. Um, nowadays, there's two, maybe one. So you've alleviated the middle kid. Their point in this article is that... Um, you know, the firstborn might be a CEO and the lastborn might be a stand-up comedian, but the middleborn is the one that's going to change the world and is going to, you know, uh, communicate with people and be a mediator uh, through life. And um, it's funny because as they were describing it, I realized I'm an only child by reality, uh, but I, I relate more to the middle child because my mother was both the oldest child and the youngest child in my household. <laughs> so I was actually like the middle child who had to fucking just be figure out a place to just be yeah uh so i think that um i don't know they're talking to me uh, they're saying hey we need more people like uh, you so what i find is uh, what makes a middle child neglect and dysfunction and we have plenty of those things in today's society so we're just not middle children anymore but there's plenty of people to fill this role yeah i, I you know what i'm saying that. yeah um child molester beaten to death his first week in prison I'd say that one worked itself Here's out. Here's the thing. Is that, is that news? Are you? Yeah, seriously, a week in by a 19-year-old. It's good. The guy was like 55 or something like that. And, <laughs> See you later. Yeah. <laughs> uh, are your friendships giving you a boost or bringing you down? The power of positive people. All I can say is hashtag hell yeah. Yeah. Yeah, positive I people. believe in that incredibly so. Yeah, I, I do too. Do you try to be a positive person, Mrs. Ryan? I try. I fail all the time, but yeah. I try really hard. We all fail, but I feel that you try as well. I think that's pretty awesome. Thanks for seeing it. I really yeah. do. It's hard as shit sometimes. Sometimes. Sometimes it's hard just to put your smile on in the morning. You know, sometimes it's hard. Yeah. Especially when you deal with what you got to deal with on a daily basis. I would imagine it's very hard. So you do pretty good. I just, I feel like you get down on yourself sometimes. I don't want to get into it. I'm just saying, take it easy. Give yourself a pat on the back. Love yourself a little bit. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Uh, and that's been What's Going On. You want to take a little break, Mrs. Ryan? Yes, Bring please. Jackie Mazzarella in? That'd be so good. All right. We will be back right after this, and Jackie Mazzarella will be here. More to come.
are back. <laughs> Hello, Jackie Mazzarella. Hello. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I haven't seen you in, I don't know how long it's been, but it's been a heck of a long time. You it look has. exactly the same to me. <laughs> and we figured out that your life is quite different. Yes. You, you, I mean, you're still acting, but you've got, uh, you've got a son. I do. Who is not even really that young anymore. He's seven. And you are an oversharer, which we're going to talk I, more about. That's right, I am. It's a whole different so career. Glad. That's a whole different I'm so glad. <laughs> How are you? So I'm good. I'm good. What's I feel been going like on? I, um, I have to give props to the face whisperer, who because just yesterday I had a facial, and that's probably why oh. I look good and rested, <laughs> because she is a, a Wonder Woman. They're great people. They're great people. Well, I, you look great. Thank you. So. Thank you. <laughs> uh, what have you been up to? It's, well, let's see. We worked together on Everybody Hits Chris, we but did. that was it's been off the air for ten years, right? Almost, I think oh nine. I think so. I think it's been off. I In think twenty ten was the. Twenty ten was the last. So eight. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, which is so crazy that it's been that long because it keeps coming back around into my life. I don't know if it happens to you too. But Whenever the, I mention it, I'm surprised that people not only know what it was, but have such a fondness for it. Because I didn't really realize or remember that in the time. You know how it is yeah. when you're working on something, you make yeah. it and people kind of whatever. But it's lived on in syndication and international syndication. Well, and Brazil. Can we talk about Brazil? Can I would love. Know? Like So <laughs> the Brazilians are cuckoo over Everybody Hates Chris. Yeah. Did you know that? They, no. oh, yeah, I did. Yeah. They always were. It was like one of the first international markets to go after that show. Yeah. Really? So when I, I was like, Oh, I have to get onto Instagram and Twitter and stuff. When I first went on, all of a sudden, all of these followers yep. from Brazil, Mr. Senorita Morello. Oh and, my you know, god! Like, and so I learned how to say obrigado. And then I have a friend who's Brazilian, and I, because when I get paragraphs of stuff, I'm like, what does? I don't know if I should say thank you oh. or please stop. You Do know. <laughs> When uh, when it's when it's redubbed or whatever, it's obviously not your voice. So they're just recognizing your face. Oh, I yeah, I guess. Right? I, well, unless it's they syndicated they them made, did they subtitle in it? English, and then they did they. Subtitles I know they had or they did dubbing. Oh, they did both for okay. some markets that they didn't want to spend the money to. It, this happens okay. all the time, but like when they don't want to spend the money to dub, which is apparently very quite expensive. Right, they subtitled, but who knows. So maybe it's subtitled there. But they I've gotten like really lovely and then some like, okay, I'm not giving you my shoe size <laughs> oh, messages. <my. laughs> you know? That's a whole different thing, maybe. Oh, yeah. That is weird. Yeah, but I know everywhere. that and when I see uh Tyler on Instagram or Tashina or Terry, you know, part of the cast, yeah. I know they really went after Tyler and Tyler was like, please stop like it's too much because i think he was so overwhelmed by it Gosh, and so surprised been. by it and just a kid at the time too yeah yeah wow so young really... like 12 then or yeah, younger a, they all started uh, at 13 they were all 13 okay. i 13? believe that they turned 13 that first oh, like yeah, that first month yeah. or so oh it's my so gosh young and, and anything <sighs> my character was a horrible racist who didn't know she was a racist. Yes. So I would say horrible things yes. to Tyler. And then we would with a smile on your and face and like, she's so nice right. for work. And then we would cut and I would hug him. And I'm, I'm so, so sorry. sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I mean, that oh, audition great. for uh, for the show was an improv. And I had just arrived Tell from, us, from what, New York. What, what happened? Who were you with? So I just arrived from New York. I was. It was my... I got very lucky. It was my first audition in L.A. I had been here for two weeks, and it was for the show. And it was oh. supposed to be one episode. And so they brought me in, and it was an improv. And so they said, we're bringing you in to play a teacher. Um, and so we just want you to, to talk to the students. So I was just talking to casting, talking, and then they said, now we want you to flirt with him. And I was like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, just to fl I was like, huh? And then they were like, yeah. You're like, is this really the Chris like Rock all show? These weirdly, like, horribly inappropriate things. And I was like, wait, how old is he? No. Wait, oh, what? And so <laughs> that was the audition. And it Whoa. was this back and forth. And in fact, and then I got the part. And when we were shooting it, <laughs> that, um, that first scene, that first episode, they for whatever reason, hung on to that notion of me being flirty or, or doing something. And 
the first scene was just me walking by and saying, hi, Chris, or hello, Chris. And they had me do it. And Tyler, as a 12 year old or 13 year old said, that makes me feel uncomfortable. And they were like, oh, oh and they were like, wait, can you not? They were like, can you still flirt, but not so much and smile less or smile? Yeah, maybe smile more. So it's not so whatever. Like it <laughs> more was. More cartoony. Yeah, yeah. It was oh, really wow. crazy. But then it just, it just, they just created this amazing character for me. It's, it's so, so good. It's so much fun. It was uh, so good. Well, you were just mentioning, it doesn't matter why, because the story is kind of long and bizarre but you were just mentioning you had to go visit someone in the hospital recently and even even that was an ordeal because they recognized you and you couldn't get in to see the person because you had to do like five minutes of yeah "Yeah, i'm so and so right which was just two months ago and again the show has been off the air a long time but it's in syndication (laughs) and i there's there's a concierge at the hospital and he was looking down and when he looked up it he really was like oh 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 my god and i i the first thing I think is not, oh, he recognizes me from everybody hates Chris. It's like, I should what? say, too, someone, what? your husband had was in an accident type <laughs> thing, and you right. were, like, frantic to go make sure he was okay, right. which well, he then, was. Luckily, I had already spoken to him and okay. knew that he was okay, because if not, I mean, it honestly, <laughs> it took me five minutes to calm him down, because he kept saying, I'm freaking out. I'm freaking out. I was like, it's okay. Yeah, thanks. You know, it's okay. And I'd give him his name, and then he's like, I can't find him. That's his last name? No, that's his first name, and this is his last Name. Oh, he was all flustered. He was so flustered, yeah. and uh, and then he was like, "Can I have an autograph?" Yeah, you can have an autograph. He just, he's like, "I'm gonna help you find your husband." I'm like, "I really hope you do." Because it's those costly ears <laughs> above your head. Wow. And uh, and then at the end, he's like, "Can I?" Can I have your autograph? Can I have a picture? Don't tell anybody. I'm not supposed to ask. <laughs> and uh, and I was like, oh, okay, LA. put your phone behind you like you're taking a selfie, and I'll <clears> dip in. And he was like, you will? And I said, absolutely. So he did that. He put his hand behind him, and I, you know, went in. Correct. And then <laughs> I, um, I started, he finally found him. And I start walking away, and I hear, and there's a line that's starting to <laughs> pile up behind me. Because people need to find their people. the emergency the room. Yep. And uh, the gate's and, done blocked and, yeah. by Ms. Morella. <laughs> and uh, I start walking away, and I hear him say to the person behind me, "That's a superstar." And I was like, "Oh, oh my gosh!" But I, it made me think, what are people who are celebrities like? What's what it must like? They go through. Yeah. You know, right. because people don't recognize me. Like, I mean, they do randomly. Like it's always a random. It happens, but. Now I can see why people sort of stay hidden and have exit routes and things like that when they're really, when, when everybody knows who they are. It's, it's weird. One thing I do remember from that show, Colleen, you can probably back me up. Actually, I, I'm assuming everybody. Um, the people that did watch it, even back then, the, the fans that did watch it were like, I don't know, the, the fans for that show were obsessive about that show. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean like, nobody was like, eh. Like the people who loved Everybody Hates Chris loved Everybody yeah. Hates Chris. And I'm wondering, do you think it's the, maybe a question for both of you, do you think it's because of how personal the stories were, the fact that all that stuff really did happen to Chris or one of the guys or whatever? Do you know what I mean? Is it, well, what, what, what was I the mean, draw that made people so? I think it was, first of all, I think Chris Rock Inherently, all it's Chris demographics. Rock. Yeah, of course. You know, everybody loves Chris Rock. Yeah. And I also think it was the first realistic black family on television true comedy that was done yeah you know i mean the cosby show which mm. <laughs> we won't get into. no it's just it was, it was very, a different was it was a different, different picture it was a pretty it. saccharine understanding of what that the doctor world and the was lawyer like and right and the brownstone which was important the whole thing and great for, yeah for for other reasons but i think that uh, and it's also the nostalgia, I'm sure, was a big part of it. it was set Nostal- in the, the 80s nostalgia, 80s yeah. New York. There was a lot of comparison to Wonder Years made at the time because of the, the video and the yeah. narration. And yeah. then having Chris be actively involved in it because he was. Like, didn't he do the narration? Yeah, like, that he was did him. all the narration, yeah. So there wasn't like a third party that was reading his stories. It was it really was him. him. And so the inflection of emotion when he retold the moments of those stories was pretty powerful. That's interesting. So, yeah. There was a lot he, of people for, that fed back to that. The narration for my character always was, I should have hit her with a frying pan. <laughs> I should have, like, thrown her out a window. I <laughs> should have. And then they cut to her, though, and she just... <laughs> what is it, Chris? You know, with the, the dog and the I head tilting him. the whole bit. It was so good. It was the greatest. 
Uh, it's funny, you just probably accidentally segued to something. You sent me the um, the, the trailer for Overshare, and yes. our good friend Owen is in it. And I, oh, not oh. your husband, but Owen, Owen Smith. Smith. And uh, and he he was the voice of Chris when on the set when Chris Rock was not there. Oh right right right. So as well as a writer, he was also the the Chris Rock character. Um, but the fact that you're still doing stuff with him, uh, it makes me so happy. We love him. I want him to come on the. Can we? Do you think he would come on the thing? Oh, absolutely. Oh, I would love. I would love to have him in here. It'd be great to see him again. Um, He's so awesome. How did that all come about with the oversharer and stuff? It, well, the it became very much. Uh, a, a reunion in a lot of ways. I so I, as you said, I have a, a seven-year-old now. But when you know, a couple of years ago, I was uh, in a playground with him, and he's playing with this little girl, and I'm standing next to the mom of the little girl, and we're just talking. And I, I don't, I didn't know her, and uh, and at one point I thought, why is she telling me all this stuff? <laughs> why am I telling her all this stuff? Oh and my gosh. What if I That's said so like funny. really outrageous stuff? Like what would she do? And I literally like left there, ran home and started writing. And I would be at the computer and I'd start laughing and yell back to my husband because I work in the front of the house and he works in the back of the house. Like, what is wrong with me? And he's like, just keep going. Wow. And so I kind of like blasted out. There must have been six or eight episodes yeah. initially, right? Mm -hmm. And then I called Kali. And I was like, Kali, I, uh, you know, I started writing this and, and or I wrote these and, and Kali's like, we should produce these. Yeah, we should, oh, absolutely. okay, what does that mean? You know, and so we started working together and as we were talking about it and, and figuring out what to do, we, um, I knew I wanted a director that mm. I didn't, I didn't want to wear you didn't want all to do it the yourself, hats. Right. I didn't want to because I knew I was going to play the oversharer, and it was just too much. And we were figuring out we were location scouting, and we were doing all of it. But the whole bit. And the whole bit. Producing and so your own thing. We went to Ali, Ali Leroy, who co-created Everybody Hates Chris. Sure. Was the showrunner, and we thought we should go to him first before because we were lucky enough we had all these directors from the show <gasps> that we were thinking we could go to. And of but course. we we out of respect and and uh, you know love of Ali and what he does. Does and we went to him first and sent him the one sheet and he goes, oh no, I'm doing these. Yeah, yeah, he you know? yeah so I'm sure to, to work with you in that way, absolutely, it was, I'm sure. It was, uh, so he jumped on and then because we got him, we got an award-winning DP, Patrice Bankhead, nice. the oh makeup artist. Of she came. She came on board. Uh, These we are all asked, oh, and too. so yeah, all of a sudden it's it became really cool. You got a bunch. And of people. over the course of that, you know, we've had Eric as DP. We had Mark <laughs> as DP. Yep. Um, well, Eric Messerschmidt, or Eric Eric uh, uh, Eric, Fletcher. Eric Fletcher. Oh, Eric Fletcher, of course, yeah. yeah. Eric Wilson editing, mm -hmm. his brilliant editing. Cool. Um, Eric, Lucas also Eric that's right. Great. Eric, you literally like, put the old team back together. Yeah, that's if, amazing. Am I forgetting anyone? Because it was really, it was awesome. And the, so. Uh, oh, Mark During Powell. We should yes, say Mark During Mark, Powell. Yes. yes, a fantastic um, DP. Yeah, and so um, when we shot Owen's episode. Uh, which was the first episode that was released, and that's why we used it for the trailer. And uh, and I think it in my heart, that's my favorite one. Um, uh, I was walking with Ali. Don't mind me. <laughs> Hello. Um, up on to the set we shot in Griffith Park, and I said to him, I can't even imagine what Owen is what Owen must have thought when he got this script because we didn't know each other that well. I and mean, is this we the scene that other. I saw that I... Uh, this is the episode that you saw the yeah, clip yeah, of. Yeah. And so, so funny. And Ali looked at me, he goes, him, I didn't know you had this in you. Like, I like, what? <laughs> like, this is crazy. It was, and it was, and we just ran from there. How can people see it? Because if anybody hasn't seen the overshare, <clears throat> it's very, very funny. It's, it's, would you call it web, so, a web series? It's a web, it's a web series. series. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, it's theoversharer.com. Easy. Can, is easy enough. Uh, YouTube at the Oversharer. You know, it, it's pretty easy. And they're all to, what, like? Seven minutes, they're six only, minutes. They were saying like four. Four, four minutes. Right? Okay. They're, they're all they're about quite, four minutes. Wow. That's and, awesome. Uh, I've seen little snippets, and I know I just I when she walked in, I, you were in the other room, but I had that, that flash that you had out there of like I think I know you. <laughs> I think I know you from like working with you forever ago, and just right. being like, come over here. Um, so I don't really, but like knowing that you're behind the overture, and I've seen pieces. We talked about it, but like I really 
I'm curious, and I don't know if you can say this, but like, it feels so much like my life. I was wondering how real the moments are because it just seems so well candid. There is truth in every episode. All right. So that's what I feel that the draw was for Everybody Hates Chris. And the same for Seinfeld, yeah, quite yeah. frankly. Like all of those were real Larry David yeah. Yeah. moments yeah. and so on and so forth. Real Chris Rock moments, real Jackie Mazur. Yes, yeah. absolutely. The authenticity comes through whether you want it to or not. That's right. You had those feelings. You experienced this already. So you know exactly what you're doing when right. you're playing it on TV too. Yeah, yeah. It's so cool to me. It's a, so it sounds gonna, like yes. The answer is yes. I'm going to deep dive and live in it like over and over because like. I hope you do. And I and I, I hope wait. you still talk to me afterward. <laughs> Please. I'm going to like cool. I, I hold myself back to not be like, what's her cell phone number so I can text her? Like, I, because I literally like he looks at me sometimes. He's like, why did you say that? I'm like, I don't know. Like, I just <laughs> but felt not, like. Yeah, I just I, I should like, say curious, it. curiosity. Yeah, but what it's made that you say same that? thing. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just find myself well, talking about weird things yeah. and I'm like Well it's almost as if you know, the stuff that you say to your partner yeah. or to your best friend is not <laughs> what you normally would say to a stranger on the street. Yes. And yet not for the overshare. Except I do. Yeah. So well, you oh, or, oh see? Oh then it's Well you attribute yeah. it to uh, after you had your kid and you're living with the child and you're going back out into the world, so to speak, kind of thing. It's not dissimilar where we're kind I of sheltered a little bit. Right, you get we'll isolated, and right? And so you're exactly. trying to make a connection. I Couldn't mean, think of that one word. All of this stuff is is to me, it's hilarious, and it and it's yeah. like can be crazy. But in reality, it's trying to make a connection with somebody else. Yeah. And yeah. the thing that I I love about the overshare is that there's not a mean bone in her body. And she's not, you know, there are a lot of overshares where you're like, oh, too much, you too know, much, too like much. there's a desperation. <laughs> and yet somehow, I don't know how we did it, but well, I think, think we figured you. I think out. It's the same way that you were able to pull off being a racist to Chris, young Chris Rock. <laughs> There's something uh, about the smile and the twinkle in the eyes where it's just like, she can't possibly mean that. She just can't possibly mean that. She just can't. Your warmth shines through you. Like, yeah. there's something inherently good about your human that's like, sure, you're going to say awful weird things, but at it's the, not to be malicious. I would say at Thank the very you. least, she's kidding. You know what I mean? Like, at the, the very least, she doesn't mean these things. Right, right. That comes through. One of my I friends is, uh, you know, it, through the years as uh, actors and friends who are actors and there's all this stuff about branding and how do you you know when I came out here to LA people were like you're perfect for one hour dramas because you're from New York and you know law and order and you know your look and everything you're a lawyer whatever. what year did you come out here when Chris started what oh really uh, yeah, two, 05. yeah 05. 05 so uh so then, of course, the first job I get is a comedy, and then everyone's like, "She just does comedy." So there, you know, like there. So that happens. So um, there are all these different things it's a that problem actors being too good at it. do, and these things. Oh, shucks. No, for uh, real, for real. I mean, you were a breakout character. That's why you were. It was a one episode, and then you ran for four seasons. Yeah, yeah. But comedy's hard too. So if you find someone that can pull off timing and have a sensibility to them, like keep them close. Right, right. Well, and I think too, like people. I think people try to push and figure out tricks to comedy. And I know a lot of people do that. And there are a lot of different classes and how to do tricks and reversals and stuff like that. But for me, I grew up in the theater. So you just you just, just do, do it. it. You <laughs> believe it. You, you know, for Ms. Morello, you know, she loved him. She was trying to understand him, but she she had all these awful preconceived notions <laughs> and but she really believed them and she was trying so in that sense do you remember any examples oh my gosh not that i want to make you say them now but i would love to yeah. give an example of um <laughs> do you remember it was just like oh chris i i know it's just you don't you're saying that because you love watermelon or some some right. ridiculous stereotype right. about like black people there, well, from the there 80s was the one with the um the uh where the kids had to pair up and t take the eggs home to take care of them. To, yes, and yes. so she gives them a brown egg. Yes. And then she's, and then and you're thinks like, nothing oh, of it. we have an <laughs> odd number of kids. So you take the single one because I'm sure your mom raised you on her own. You know, like that kind of, you know. So yeah, wrong. It's so wrong. So but wrong. it's so but relational on a logical level. Like but, this is like things you. That happened to yeah. him right. and I was like come on this can't be real and the writers you know Ali would look at me like oh really 
It's you like know, you want to like, hear the story. And then every week it was like, wow, there's more. They actually thought it like, how long can they think of stuff? Oh, don't worry about yeah. it. How R- old is Chris? 30 yeah. years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's 38. Yeah. Wow. But one of my friends had said I was uh, my perfect type. He was like, you're sort of like Betty Crocker who has arsenic in her apple pie. Whoa. <laughs> and I'm like, I love that so much. Americana with a little spice. Yeah, a little so spice. good. A little, well, you are always smiling. You do always have that twinkle in your eye. What's your secret to staying happy? You seem like a really happy person. Huh. You did you did way back when, mm. and you are fulfilling the same memory that I uh, had of you today. Oh, so <laughs> I, I don't know. I think that, and my son is very much that. Like, when I look at him, and and he's got that same. It's an it's the optimism I think, and and you know sometimes as life and business gets hard, I think like oh you know is it optimism to a fault? Yeah. But um, you know Jack gets up out of bed, he wakes up like in mid sentence laughing and smiling. Oh. So even if it's six a.m. five thirty, it's hard to to uh, to not get up with him or to. Be annoyed or like I can't. He's so happy. He's a happy kid. I think you're a wonderful mom for putting that out there. It's your <laughs> child being the source of your happiness, but you were like this well before you had a kid, right? Well, no, I'm not saying he was the. I mean, he is definitely a source of, course, of my today, happiness. Of course, today, yes, but I think that it's. Um, I don't know. I think it's. I think it's an optimism that's in me. I think it's also. Uh, I think it's about being kind to people. Yeah. And I love that. and not um, you know especially now it can be such a nasty world and the way people talk to each other and the way people say things and I think it just comes back to you in a way and I mean and you had talked about law of attraction and, mm. and you know without getting into any of the like I know a lot of people have there are a lot of books out and a lot of sure. stuff but I do when it comes down to the the bare bones it's like what you give out hopefully is what you get people talk about the law of attraction it's the golden rule it for really, me it's really comes down to yeah. everything you learn in kindergarten you know if you want a happy life be nice to people and yeah. it's gonna happen yeah and I think that it's also like remembering what's important. Yeah. You know, knowing what's important knowing, and then remembering it. That's right. That's There's a right. lot of times, you know, a lot of times, whatever we think, whatever we think is important, yeah. all of a sudden something happens. Sometimes it's a childbirth, sometimes it's a, a, an illness, whatever. Everything just gets flipped, turned upside down, yeah. just like Will Smith said. And then everything that you thought you were working towards couldn't be less important in your life. Yeah. And everything that you thought was never going to be a goal or important in your life becomes like the priority and the only highway you're willing to take. Yeah, yeah. And it's not to say that, because I think a lot of people almost take it to an extreme where they're like, I know what's important. And you, it's, it's not that the stuff that you're concerned about or that you want or like career stuff or things or writing and doing whatever isn't important, but it's, it it needs to be put in perspective Mm -hmm. in, in, and I think up here reconciled yeah. maybe yeah. almost yeah yeah I like it I don't know, I don't know. what I, what I'm hearing behind it is that there's effort behind being and feeling this way and that's what I think people need to understand I believe that there are people who just wake up happy every day I'm not one of them right I'm I'm just not I'm not <laughs> right. one of them um, I have physical pains I have ailments I've got you know what I mean I've got all the things that everyone else deals with right right um, but through meditation through spending time with yourself. <clears throat> and then realizing that you don't have to feel however you're feeling. You can feel however you want to feel. That's right. There was something that I read that was something like that, where it was it was sort of you can, you can choose how you're going to feel. Not that you're not going to, I mean, listen, I get disappointed. I find, you know, bad news, something's happening, whatever. But it's also choosing, well, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go, I'm going to have a good day. Yep. So the stuff that the you can made. control, there's so much stuff you can't control. So the stuff you can control, why not try it with a positive attitude? Yeah. You know, is that, that something, is that anything that they enforce or that you learned in, like by becoming an actress? Is that in anything that you were taught of like attitude? Um, you know, I mean, a lot of the, the acting stuff is all about being in the moment yeah. and listening. And that's a lot of a that's a lot of a day, especially everybody's on their phones, everybody's doing stuff. Being present. Being present, mm-hmm. list, like really listening when someone's talking to you, which we all have problems doing, I think, And but that's a big acting thing. Um, yeah, that may be. 
That it just means, feels I mean, like I it all I'm goes sort of together. Born like an optimist, or yeah. born like this, like ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, mean, I didn't mean to say that about you. I hope you didn't take it that way. I just mean that um, every day that I would see you and everybody hates Chris, it would brighten my day. And, Thank you. And I don't feel I that I'm alone. I was always happy to that. be there. I f- that came through, but that came through. And that's perhaps exactly what I'm talking about because there are a lot of us that were happy to be there, and then there were people that it was just a job. Right. And I'm not. There's not even names to associate here, but right. I mean, for some people, it's just a job, right. and some people, it's more. It was well, more. Yeah. And my feeling is, uh, y- yes, it is just a job. But why not love your job? Why not love what you're enjoying? And if you're exactly. not doing exactly what you love or what you're, at least en- enjoy what you, what you're doing. If you do that, it's going yeah. to get it's you to your get, goal much gonna faster. It's going to get better, and your and your whole day is going to be better. Even if you're doing something that you that is not what you're interested in, or you're still why not enjoy it? Isn't yeah. it? Why it, not isn't make it the nicer best out of doing it? that than being annoyed about it? Like, isn't it easier to? How would you rather feel in the yeah, moment? Would, yeah. 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 But that's what it kind of annoys me when I've been on sets, um, you know, like as a guest star in different shows and things, and it, and it's rough. Specifically, like, think, what shows? Yeah, just kidding, yeah. just kidding. But you know, people and and I get it. People get tired and they're long days, and but I just feel like those actors who are lucky enough to have series regular jobs and they have their own shows, they're uh, they and don't treat people well or are complaining about it i have a real problem with that because i feel like they've forgotten how lucky they really are yep, gratitude because there are tons of talented actors out there yep. that could be in that same situation and 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 do more with it and as ali said to me he goes because i was at um i think it was the year we got the golden globe nomination and i got invited to all of those crazy swag things before yeah. <laughs> where i was like what is like you want to give me this and i was like i don't that's i don't oh, know oh the uh, the gift suites all the and all that stuff suites yeah and stuff and um and ali said to me he goes just go and enjoy it because yeah. next year this may not be here. They may not know who you are. Yep. Just go and enjoy go it. Enjoy. It's helping them. If you wear something out and you mention them, and um, yeah. So, but it was it was it was a weird. <laughs> yeah, it was a weird though. The wake up. Yeah, but you were all about that, right? And PR. I mean, that was, was that a was a lot of big part of it. Meshing yeah. that kind of stuff, <clears throat> I would think. It was it was weird to mesh because there's a lot of people like you that were newer to that world that like did not necessarily understand what it meant and so for the people that weren't as present with it they were like this is really cool we're getting all this free stuff let me get as much free stuff as (laughs) i can and as a representative person that like had to vie to get them in and to like whatever and it, it that's hard to reconcile yes. sometimes because of what you're saying of like be grateful for every opportunity you have this is a big deal and it got to be such a rote part of the schedule sometimes that people took it for granted yeah so i remember little... being at one of those um suites and there was a publicist with a with a uh, an actress whose name who i won't say <laughs> and there were these two sisters who had a business and they and they had to pay a lot of money the olsen to get twins into, no <laughs> <laughs> the two sisters who had like um, jeans or jewelry, like clothing yeah. or jewelry line, and they have to pay money to get into to be there yeah. to give away their product. Right. And these are people who are not big names and not starting out and don't have big businesses, and they're paying in the hopes that someone mm-hmm. big is going to wear the stuff. It's going to become a trend. Sure. So I was talking to them and hearing their story and thanking them, and the publicist came up with a star. And she's like, I have her. And and they were like, Oh, oh, okay. And I said, No, go, you know, go ahead. And um, and she's like, Which one do you want? Which one do you want? She goes, I think that one. <laughs> and I was like, I gotta get out of here. Was I it got, so hot? Just out of curiosity. I got, <laughs> <laughs> That's so hot. That's, I, I really and I and after I I said thank you to the girls and I was and I said and they have um they they have. I don't know what they're called, what their job is at the PAs where they oh, have to these, carry the stuff out. They have these little, they're, they're like little, they're like tiny Sherpas. women, <laughs> tiny young women. You, Take the swag you know, out to the car. Who are carrying That's what we giant, call interns in the business. They are interns, but they all seem very small, <laughs> ca- carrying giant duffel bags filled with <gasps> stuff. They're duffel in bags. fashion. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It was, it was fun. 
but it was <laughs> but it was fun and then it was gross and then it was over <laughs> I appreciate that you see both sides of it. It should be fun. It's meant to be. And, they, and everyone involved in that wants it to be fun. So I'm glad it's right. Fun. We got to get you out of here soon. But uh, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you about Owen, the documentary that Owen had a bit to do with uh, about SNL. Yes. Because I used to work there. And she's, oh. had, she's had Chris Rock there. I mean, she's had different okay. clients there. Um, and I love it. I'm a huge fan. And she loves it and is a huge fan. Uh, so live from New York. Yeah, it's so, so good. It's wonderful. And, wonderful documentary, live yours? from New York, if anybody hasn't seen it. My, my friend produced uh, JL. Do you know her? <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, very, very well. Yeah, she's great. Yeah, so so Owen is uh, uh, carried out almost all of the interviews and was the writer and, and uh, on it. And JL is a very good friend of ours. And uh, Owen is a uh, super New Yorker, like big, born and raised in Brooklyn. Um, he's a news guy and a history guy. And she knew he was the right person to make all those connections. Like he loves the city. He loves everything about it. And, and the the history of that so he went so he was here and then he was going back and forth to new york owen was owen was okay. working on but how did he get involved i'm curious yeah. about how from, he from even jl go- so this was her project this was and jl's she- idea okay. and project and jl is a force of nature okay and so yeah. jl get stuff done like no one you've ever Beautiful. met in your life love it and so she asked, what's her number <laughs> she asked, right she asked owen she if he would be interested in coming on knowing that as he's a similar. producer a writer and producer on it so so yeah she, they he was one of the first ones on it and then she created this this production and she had never produced a documentary before wow. and it was the opening night film of Tribeca Film Festival Holy like, smokes. she was like we're going to get we're going to open at Tribeca she knew and this ten, ahead of time you know and i think it was 10 months later it opened at Tribeca like it was insane and amazing and i mean owen talks about the interviews does he, he have do. any affiliation with snl other than being a fan though or no really so he put all that that's amazing because it's very thorough yeah yeah and i'm i you know the the amount of stuff that they couldn't use sure is, is insane but he's oh, i want to come so, over just like, for the outtakes yeah he's i mean owen's brain is history and remembering he's like he was like oh yeah well don't you know george carlin said in 1964 yeah i'm that, that way well, like, i'm that's a savant him. like that she yeah. calls me a savant now yeah i used to be yay now i'm a savant right that's that's owen same <clears> thing <throat> is he a letterman fan by any chance he loves letterman <laughs> are you serious Love. Well, when he Letterman. heals up, let's get him in at least. Can oh you guys come gosh. over to at least check this stuff out? And Absolutely. then we can talk about uh, maybe you should, something. You should have Owen on. I would love can to. Always Once he can bend his legs. What? <laughs> <laughs> Once he can sit down. No, you he had a surgery. He had here. surgery recently. We'll get a pillow. We're good. <laughs> come whenever. <laughs> yeah, we'll get an ottoman, I guess, for him. Sure. <laughs> Uh, that would be it. awesome. He'll That'd bring cool. his his idols and st- you know and, and I'll bring out stuff. stuff in the closet. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. Sure. Do you oh, have anything for wait. us? I have a million things I could ask you, but I mean we're out of time, and I hope All you'll right. come back. I this love that so, we're back in contact. Super fun. It was so back. nice to to sit and and to see Catch you up. again. And in fact, I was going to say uh, my. Uh, at Jack's school, they had a Back to the Future night, and oh, they brought a right. DeLorean on, and I was, and it was a father-son night. And I was like, oh, oh and you got to see if it was Jay. If Jay was there, you got to look. And he was like, I, yes, I remember what he looks like. I'm like, you've got to see, because they brought it onto the campus. Oh, that's so Jack. funny. Yeah, yeah, we sold that in like 2011 or something. Oh, okay. It's in England now. But uh, there are a lot of them around now. It was rare there, back yeah, then when we was. had one. Now that was there awesome. Are, you brought it onto the them. lot. And I oh, at, every, at, at I, took a, I took a picture with it. Nice. And, that's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Nice. yeah. Nice. Oh, I totally forgot about all that. Yeah. Boy, that's so funny. You built that whole thing during the kind of production. Yeah. Well, when we were on production. While we were in production, yeah. yeah all of the parts kept parts arriving. <laughs> arriving at the amazing. office. The FedEx guy was like, well, seriously, what are you making? <laughs> You know what I mean? It's all military surplus parts. These days, they'd think it was something bad. Yeah, to a yeah. set. That's hilarious. Yeah, totally. To the to the lot, of to course. To the lot. It was um, awesome. So it was funny. awesome. Yeah? Well, yeah? Thank you. I love that. Thank you for being here. It's so good thank to see you. you. Come back to... soon okay. with Owen. Um, <laughs> let's see. What do we have? We've got Breakfast Club tomorrow. Yay. And uh, this weekend, there's some stuff. But I think we're going to kind of take it easy as well. But uh, I don't know. No, there are some things. We're, see? It's too much. Too many thoughts. <laughs> 
How about we'll just see be back on Monday? <laughs> see you then. <laughs> Love everybody. Thank you for being here. Good to see you, Jeremy. So good to see you. <laughs>